So basically, plant foods contain lectins. Now, lectins are what we call a carbohydrate binding protein. So they're little proteins in the food that can bind to carbohydrate molecules. Now, understand that we actually have lots of carbohydrate molecules on our cells uh, as cell receptors and so on and so forth. So we often call them glycoproteins, where you've got a bit of a protein with a, a glyco or a carbohydrate cap to it, and lectins can actually bind to that. Now, interestingly, there are some lectins. So we talked about insulin receptors earlier and how insulin comes along and then And this receptor really just has an affinity for insulin. Now, I was probably a little incomplete because there's some chemicals that can actually bind to the insulin receptors and they're lectins. And some of these chemicals have actually been shown to bind to the insulin receptors even more avidly than insulin itself, which is quite astonishing. And when you activate the insulin receptor, well, especially in fat cells, one of the effects is going to be weight gain. So... This notion about how lectins might possibly contribute to weight gain is is very well established by basically by activating the insulin receptor. Uh, They do a whole lot of other deleterious things too, though. So you may have heard, well, let's talk about reflux. So a lot of people find that when they eat a lot of grains, they get reflux. If we feed grains to cows, we actually have to give them copious amounts of calcium. Otherwise, they could potentially even have stomach ulcers that burn holes through their stomach. Grains is not a natural food for cows. And my preference would be that cows wouldn't be fed grains. So the way this actually works is that there's something, an immune molecule called an IgE molecule, uh, that they get react to the grains, the lectins in the grains. And these IgE molecules basically stimulate a series of pathways in the gut that release stomach acid. So eating grains actually stimulates a huge production of stomach acid, a release of stomach acid. And Dr. Eric Westman did a fabulous study some years ago now where they actually stuck nasogastric tubes down into the stomach of people, feed it through the nose down into the stomach, and they were actually measuring the acid levels. And they found that they had a significant drop in pH within six days of stopping eating grains. So this is, um, these lectins, they have so many effects. You've probably heard of gluten. Well, gluten, we know that causes something called leaky gut. I think CXCR1 and zonulin and there's all these molecular things. We don't need to talk about the names, but we know that, and it's not just in people with celiac disease. We can measure this in so-called healthy people. Taking gluten leads to leaky gut in most everybody. It's just that, you know, the severity is worse in people with celiac disease. And gluten is a lectin. So these chemicals, let's talk about red kidney beans, for example. Now, There's a reason you can't buy raw kidney beans. It's because if you were to eat raw kidney beans, then as few as four could potentially be a lethal dose because they contain lectins, which is why this is why we boil and soak a lot of our foods because that actually makes them naturally safer. It sort of, it breaks down some of the lectins. Now there is a bit of confusion out there because people are well aware that traditional methods of food preparation, like soaking and boiling and so on and so forth, will actually break down a lot of lectins. But the reality is you can reduce the lectin load, but that's not the same as eliminating it. So my suggestion would be, well, do you want to make it, you know, safer? Or do you want to make it safe? So there's a condition called Favism. So our bodies have natural antioxidant defenses, and one of them is called G6PD. That produces something called glutathione. And glutathione is our most potent antioxidant that's released in the body. It is absolutely fabulous. So remember we talked before about oxidation stress and electrons being pulled away and rusting. So our body is constantly protecting itself against oxidation stress. It's just unfortunate that our bodies work on oxygen, which naturally generates oxidative stress. Now, people with this condition called Favism, they actually don't produce enough of their uh, natural antioxidant. And when they eat fava beans... Uh, that can be absolutely deadly for them 
because these generate a large amount of oxidative stress. Now, for you or I, that wouldn't kill us because our bodies would ramp up the production of glutathione to protect us. But people with deficient glutathione production, we actually do see the deleterious effects of some of these foods. 